this church right but also us as temples of the Holy Spirit so we're just gonna sing over us we say come alive in the name of Jesus come alive in the name of Jesus this is a house of miracles we bring everything to the feet of Jesus everything in the name of Jesus this is a house of say amen we thank you lord thank you that we get to be your dwelling place god we pray that you would make our hearts a suitable place god for your spirit to rest would you make us pure god your word says who can ascend to the hill of the lord to that holy place those who have clean hands and a pure heart and so tonight god before we go any further we ask that you would purify us god Purify our motives until you're the one reason that we're gathered again, God. Until you're the one reason that we're singing, God. Be enough for us again, Lord. Would you purify our hearts? Clean hands and pure hearts, God. This is 
It's 
It's your face. 
13, John refers to himself as a disciple that Jesus loved. I believe he had a, a special revelation of the love of Jesus and how much Jesus actually loved him because that's literally what he referred to him as, himself as, as the disciple is Jesus loved, that Jesus loved. And it goes on to say that he reclined at the table and he, he rested his head on his chest. And while we were worshiping there, I said, Lord, why did he do that? And the Holy Spirit responded and he said, so he could hear the very heartbeat of God. We want to be so close to him, so intimate with him that we could hear and know the heartbeat of our Father. So Father, I know that's my prayer today. God, let us be... Let's be so close and intimate to you, to your spirit, Lord, that we know the very heartbeat of the Father. Now, that song says, this is the air I breathe. Holy Spirit, you are the very air and the breath that we breathe. Life giver, restorer. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for intimacy. We thank you for fresh revelation, Lord. We thank you for giving us the heart of God. The things that move your heart, Lord. Let those things move our hearts, Father. We love you. We bless you. We thank you for this time of worship and intimacy in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we just thank the worship team? It's such a blessing. Everybody's sitting down already. Could, could we just all stand up and just greet the person next to you, give them a big Thursday, Wednesday evening hug? I'm skipping days over here. It's Wednesday, right? <laughs> I 
Amen. Well, thank you for joining us tonight, church. Why well, we are a fellowshipping church. You get them to fellowship, and, and then you got to round them up again. <laughs> hey, could, can we just welcome family from Florida? James and Camilla Saunders are here. They surprised us. What a sweet, pleasant surprise. We love you guys. I just have a couple quick, quick announcements. We have a, a lot of visitors here. There is a conference going on here over the weekend, so welcome to King of Kings Worship Center. If this is your first time here, we bless you all. You know it's going to be an amazing weekend for you, so welcome. Uh, we're going to take an offering, so I'm just going to pray, and then you could bring an offering up to the three baskets up here. And then we just have a couple of announcements. Father, we thank you. For, again, for this time of worship, for, for the opportunity to sow into what you're doing here tonight, God. We thank you that you've given us the ability to gain wealth, God. And, and through our giving, we could give back to the kingdom of heaven. We could give back to this community, to this church, to this region, Lord, as we sow our dollars into this, into this region. So we bless this offering. I bless this offering. I thank you for everyone that is sowing and giving tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You could bring your offering up. And there's several, also several ways you could give through your cell phone. You could text the word give to 862-307-9226 or just do the, uh, the scan me barcode. So this Saturday night, I, I mentioned there is a conference here. Orbis Ministries is on the campus. We just here for Orbis Ministries. Saturday night, there is an open to the public healing service that's in the chapel Saturday night at 8 o'clock p.m. And then Ken Fish will be with us the following day, Sunday morning, for our regular scheduled services. Amen to that. The following Sunday, we'll have a guest speaker, Dale Mass. Who here has heard of Dale Mass? He's a prophesying machine. Come expecting to hear the word of the Lord. Next Wednesday, we will not be having midweek service but the following two Wednesdays after that, we have Margie Florent. Margie, can you just stand up? She'll be teaching on intercession, prayer, and just releasing the word over the house. And I believe that is it for our announcements. We have a special guest speaker, Prophet John Natale. Listen, John, John's, John has many accomplishments, and I'm going to read some of them off. But I think the most the most impressive thing about John and his wife, Nancy, they have six children, six boys, beautiful family. I have four, and listen, that, that's a lot. You guys, you have six men that you raise, so God bless you, Nancy. <laughs> all right, so John is a prophetic itinerant minister. He travels all around the country. Uh, he does a lot of physical meetings and conferences, but he's also found a large following and 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 influence through social media. He does weekly Zoom meetings and teaching and, and discipleship, and uh, he supports people locally and globally through these meetings. He, uh, he does, again, the live stream teachings, and um, his mission is to uplift, restore, and inspire individuals, churches, and nations, all through prof the prophetic gift on his life. So can we just welcome John Natale here? And just, just open your hearts up to what he's going to share today. He does have a word of the Lord for the house, so Father, we just bless this time. Father, we bless your humble servant, God, to, to come into this house and minister, minister through the Spirit of God, in Jesus' name, amen. Bless you, John. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? Thank you, Jesus. You know, there's a, a lot to say. But you, got, you can't say too much until the anointing is on you. Amen? So you just wait. And one of the things that I've learned throughout the years of ministry, and this is our 21st year in ministry traveling, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a foundational background on that in a moment, but one of the things that's so critical is no matter who you are, how many years you've been in ministry, you wait on God. You wait on the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter what you've talked about, what you've thought about, what notes you've put. You know, the Holy Spirit uses us significantly extemporaneously. 
where there's not much to, to, to draw from. Maybe a little bit of a foundation, but the way we've been operating for 20 plus years is when we get here, that's when I hear. And there's lots of times when I don't hear anything until I come up here. And that'll really challenge me at times because there's a lot of people that put an expectation on you and many people want to know what you're bringing to the table beforehand. And one of the things that the Lord has spoke to me for all these years is, I can't have the enemy, come on God, I can't have the enemy know anything. Because if he gets a wind of anything, he has access to it. Amen? So even in the midst of during worship, I was brought 20 years ago into specific things and specific visions that I had. 20 years ago, just by one song, that last song we sang. And there's reasons for it. So I just want you to just stand to your feet just for a moment before we engage. And close your eyes and tonight, even though the topic was faith that overcomes fear, Tonight, when you pull so much on the hem of the garment of God and you put such a demand on it, everybody in this room has a story. Everybody in this room is contending for something. Everybody in this room is believing for something. And God knows what you've been through. And there's a word coming down the pipe tonight about that. But tonight, when you pull on it, Pull on it like you've never pulled on it before. For your family, for your loved ones, for your children, for your spouses, for your job, for your home, for, your, for, for a wife or a prodigal son or daughter that, that, is, that has went astray for a bit. And you pull on it in a way that God could you Is there a possibility that I, who knows what tomorrow brings? We have no idea what tomorrow brings. But Lord, I want to put such a demand on it tonight, God, that I don't want to leave here the same the way I came in. And God's not interested in just another meeting. He's not interested in just another message. He interest, he's interested in, in a movement. He's interested in something radically shifting in your life where we, oh, come on, God, where we don't get so comfortable and that we can forecast what's coming. Come on, God. And then there's times when the Holy Spirit will just shift things and people will say, oh, the, the spirit of an evangelist was on you. And you've got to be prepared whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do. Amen? Hallelujah. So I'm just going to be obedient now for step one with the Holy Spirit. And as he, this gentleman's playing in the background, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to lift your hands and I believe we're all supposed to be praying in the Spirit and just waiting on God. Thank you, Jesus. That's it. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. More of you, God. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Genesis 22. When Abraham is tested, now I'm just, I'm just listening to the Holy Spirit, and this wasn't even something that the Holy Spirit was speaking to me about at all, but I, I heard it quickly. In Genesis 22, we talk about 
Abraham is being tested. Come on, God. And he walks up that road and he walks up that hill and he has no understanding really in the natural, but in the spirit realm, yes. But in the natural realm, there's something going on where, Lord, I don't know how you're going to provide, but you're going to provide. But I sensed very significantly, and I was sharing with this with David a little while ago, and the Holy Spirit gave me a word. Now, I want you to understand something. We've been here off and on for the last over a year. And as a prophetic voice, you don't have to go somewhere to use your voice or to, or to elevate your office or, or use someone's ministry or their church to elevate your office that I have to speak. I don't have to speak. But the Lord brought us here many months ago. I believe it's probably 14 months ago now to, to watch and to listen or to be a watchman on the wall and just wait on God and sit in a chair and study the atmosphere and see the spiritual dynamics of this movement. But not to be a voice, but just to be eyes and ears and listen and wait on God. And I learned a lot and I studied and I understood and I could feel what was happening in the atmosphere. And as much as you've gone through and what you'll go through in the future and we all go through stuff and the transitions, I believe this house over the next six to 10 months, not 12, six to 10 months, will shift significantly again in a season of rest where the, the atmosphere that I sense when I'm here is the atmosphere of love that's being poured in like oil. More and more and more and more in preparation for a physical offensive. And I shared this with David a little while ago, meaning that I believe that it's not just territorial here, but regional, where there's a significant shift that comes into this house, or once the offensive is taken place, something will move dramatically in the, in the atmosphere, in the spirit realm, and actually shift the government of this city and the government of this state. But there's a time of pause, there's a time of, of rest, and there's, a, and there's a time of advancement. And I believe the season that this house is in is a time of where you're receiving from God. Because you can't receive and be on the offensive at the same time, and you can all be seated. And it's super important to, to understand the sensitivity of God, amen? Of where you're at and where you're going and what you're doing and what you're saying and where you're supposed to be. And as I said before, this message was Faith that overcomes fear. But I just wanted you to understand something. The Lord is, I believe, getting ready to challenge all of us into a place where it's going to get a little bit uncomfortable before it becomes comfortable. Amen? And the Lord brought me back into 2001 when I was on staff in a church in, in Jersey. And I've been on staff in many churches. And we had a revival center in, in Cranford for three years. We had a prophetic school called Voices of the Wilderness School of the Prophets. And we're on our third book now. And I'm going to get to that in a minute on the, the spontaneousness of God and how we can actually do something in your life when you were afraid to do it, but you had no idea that you were actually doing it. You were actually engaged in something that you didn't even know you were engaged in. Amen? Because there's times when the Lord does not want to give you the blueprint of what's happening in your life because sometimes we get too much information and then once the information has been given and you release it to others, that's when the enemy has access to it. Amen? I say this many times, that the enemy only has access where authority is given. Come on, God. So we want the blueprint but then we, mm, come on God, and then we go to man and we release the blueprint. And then once you release it in the natural realm, the enemy has full access of it. Come on God. Not too long ago, I had a vision. And this is all just the spirit of God just moving like just some popcorn stuff now. But I had a vision and I saw Isaac on the altar. And I saw him looking at his father. And when he was looking at his father, he was looking at his father, but he was looking past his father. And you look at the two individuals and you see faith. 
Because let me tell you something, we've never been asked to walk that road. Many of us have gone through some interesting stuff. I had a horrific childhood. Alcoholism in my home, drug abuse, physical abuse, parents drunk at the same time. Everything you could possibly imagine. All at the same time, conceived that of drunkenness, premature almost three months. The enemy wanted me dead before I was even born. And not having an understanding of, of who you are and what you are, and then that audible voice of God comes. I believe every one of us in this room has the opportunity and the availability to hear the audible voice of God. It doesn't matter if you're in the five-fold ministry. It doesn't matter what capacity you are. The Holy Spirit speaks to all of us in significant and powerful ways, and he wants to use you significantly and powerfully. Amen? But when you look at the, the, some foundational things, I, would, I want to go back now to Abraham and Isaac. When you see those two individuals and they're, they're walking a road and you can, one de, is dependent on a spiritual father and one is dependent on a natural father. And I can guarantee you, it doesn't matter how strong they were, I guarantee you that realistically there were thoughts of, God, I'm going to take every step that I possibly can, the slowest step I've ever walked to get to the top of that hill. And I don't know how you're going to do it, but you're going to do it. And every, as I said before, every one of us has a story. And every one of us has, a, has a, what we're contending for right now. And some of us are, are going through more heavier stuff than others. Amen? And maybe you haven't gotten that breakthrough just yet. Maybe you haven't received the breakthrough just yet. Maybe you're getting weary. I try to be as transparent, as real as possible as a man of God that there's so many times when you want to throw in the towel and you're weary and you're tired. And you know what? In all the years that I've been in ministry, it didn't come until around 2015, 2016, where the intensity really came to the ministry when we got into more of a governmental platform. And then the enemy just doesn't go after you. He goes after everybody. He goes after your wife. He goes after your children. And this is another thing I want to say to you. Guard the anointing. Protect your wife. Come on, God. You know, when we left in 2002, and I, I need to just release some of this foundational stuff. In 2002, when the Lord called us into ministry, and I resigned from a company, and we took four kids and left for Michigan, in Saginaw, Michigan, for nine weeks with only $500 to our name. And everybody thought we were crazy. But we answered the voice of God. I thought I had faith. And people could say, oh yeah, the man of God, he's got faith. But you know what? I looked at it and the Lord spoke to me the other night. And he goes, your wife had faith. Come on, God. Oof. Wisdom. Proverbs. It says fear is the beginning of wisdom. It's good fear. The Greek is phobos. It means terror or reverence or awe. I'm like, Lord, over the course of the last, been serving God for so many years. I don't know your story of how many years you've been serving God, but I'm sure every one of us in this room has been challenged with something where you're, Lord, I'm not sure what to do. Amen? I don't know how to proceed, God. I've got questions. Sometimes, you know, the very things that we're praying for and hoping for, and it doesn't come to pass, we start questioning everything. But God. So when they got up to the mountaintop, and Abraham and Isaac were on top of the mountain, you look at these two individuals that were laying down, what Isaac was laying down on the altar, and Abraham's looking at his son. I guarantee you, there was a moment there, a kairos moment of time, when there was so much angelic activity on top of that hill that you might have been looking at your son or your son might have been looking at you, but you were looking through them. Because at the end of the day, man doesn't give you any peace. It's only Jesus, Holy Spirit, that gives you peace. Amen?
Matthew 14, 13 through 21. Matthew 14, 13 through 21. Talks about the feeding of the 5,000, 15,000, 20,000. Then you get into Matthew 14, 22 through 33. And all of a sudden it says, Jesus immediately made his disciples get into the boat, go before him to the other side while they sent to the multitudes away. He went up to the mount by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Be of good cheer, as I do not be afraid. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, Come. I just want to share one thing regarding that. You get to that place where the Holy Spirit's been speaking to me for the last several months regarding sensitivity sensitivity to the Spirit of God, sensitivity regarding your life, sensitivity regarding your direction, sensitivity regarding your calling, sensitivity regarding your destiny. I've said this before, I prophesied it, I released specific words regarding it, that specific people, even people, would be separated from your inner circle because they weren't called to go into your next season of your life. Simply because where you're going, if they don't carry what you carry, they'll actually hinder you Come on, God. So you have to be even sensitive to the very people that are in your life. Because there's a time where it doesn't mean you're letting them go. It's, just, it's you're transitioning. Even what you're listening to, what you're hearing. Because let me tell you something. In the prophetic movement in the United States, there are so many prophetic voices and there's so many prophetic directions that the body of Christ is literally all over the place because they don't know who to listen to. And then you become codependent, come on God, on man instead of Holy Spirit. And, and, and come on God, and, and, and you, you notice that everyone comes in and they all bring in a different, there's a word here, and this, you're supposed to go in this direction, or this is what God is saying in that direction, or you go in this direction, or this guy in this direction. But you gotta hear the voice of God for yourself. God uses man, of course. Whoever, he can use whoever he wants to use for anybody. But the point of the matter, where we're at spiritually right now and generationally in this nation, it is absolutely critical that you hear the Spirit of God for yourself. And that you, that you can have confidence in what you're hearing and make a decision based on what the Holy Spirit is making for you than, than, than what man is making for you. Because so many times we become codependent on people and you're hearing the voice of God and you get, you get that, that, that peace in your heart, you, and whether you're a husband, you're a wife, and you, you're hearing the voice of God and then you release it to someone else and there's nothing wrong with getting counsel, but all of a sudden you become codependent and that's an that's a unhealthy soul tie. And next thing you know, they're releasing something that's completely contrary to what the Holy Spirit spoke to you. And next thing you know, you now you're, you're falling short of where God wants you to do and where he wants you to go. Amen? So the sensitivity of the Spirit of God. And regarding even the, 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 the next phase, this is one thing that the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit spoke to me about, about the next phase. Now, I just want to, I'm going to, I want to just bank on that for a little bit right now because what I heard in the spirit while we were worshiping was for the house, for this house, was that the next phase, and I'm going to say it again, six to ten months of a cataclysmic shift that will bring an incredible leverage to the very thing that you're contending for in the very place where you're going, where an entire identity will change. We released this word in, for, for 2024, just before the year, just before January 1st, we released the word of the total infrastructure change. Where it wasn't just for the body of Christ, not for specific houses, but for people, where you're, you had to have a complete shift of change in order to go where you're going. It's a complete changing of the guard because there's, there's an old wineskin. The Lord wants to shift things in order for you to get to the next place. 
But a lot of times we get comfortable and we're afraid to make the change. Because let me tell you something, our ministry over the course of the last 6 to 12 months, 18 months, has taken on a totally different image. A totally different image of when you used to minister and travel. We used to minister for weeks on end. Week after week and place here, place there, all over New England, all over Connecticut, Rhode Island, Boston, wherever. Week after week after week, a prophetic school, this, that, you know, a revival center. And then all of a sudden it's no longer. And the enemy will make you believe that you must have done something wrong because it's no longer. But it's not, it's not called to go forever. Because your walk and your destiny and the, everything that you do is considered an assignment. So it doesn't matter if your revival center was for three years. It doesn't matter if you traveled for 17 years. You're called to do what you're called to do, and you obey, and it doesn't matter what it looks like, and you can't have any fear or afraid that, oh, it must not, it's a man, it must not look successful anymore because I don't travel out 32 weeks at a, come on, God. You understand what I'm saying? And a total shift, because I want you to understand something, and this is what I hear the Holy Spirit. When we follow the same routine over and over and over again, the enemy is completely aware of what's coming, and he's already seen the forecast of what you're bringing. Come on, God. Because he can see the pattern, and our spirituality and our life becomes a pattern, and we follow the same pattern and the same routine, and he's right there waiting. But we don't want to shift and we don't want to change because, because it's, it becomes uncomfortable. Come on, God. Some of the greatest meetings that we ever had was when we traveled out. We would travel all the way to Boston and minister in Boston. The move of God would take place in churches. It, would, it was amazing what God would do. And you would just go there. And then the Holy Spirit would just say, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. You just got to trust me. Amen. And he makes you drive five, six hours to a specific place and you minister for two and a half hours and you drive all the way home. Come on, God. Or when you do a youth rally, you go to a place to minister and there's a hundred people in the place. And this, and come on, God, let me explain something to you. There's times where you could be as, as a minister or whoever and, the, and, and you come up with a word and you know what, I've got all these bullet points and I've got the word of God and I've got a bunch of scriptures and the Holy Spirit says, don't say a word. But a lot of people would say, well, that's not God because there was no word. Well, he was in the room. He's not here because I start reading it. I'm living it. His word is in me. Because there's people in this world that have never seen one of these and will never have one of them. Come on, God. Amen. They've never seen a Bible, but they're on fire for God because they're, because they're connected to the Holy Spirit. So I, brought, I came into a room and I preached where A.W. Tozer preached. And it's a winter night, and my son's with me, and we're getting ready to preach. The, 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 the worship's awesome. It's snowing. It's really cold. It's, it's, it's western New York. I'm getting ready to preach on the alabaster box, and the Holy Spirit says, put the Bible down. Well, as a man of God, when you've, been, when you've been invited to come and do a youth rally for a large church in Cicero, New York, and, and, and how do you tell the pastor I'm putting the Bible down? Because it's natural, that can look religious. And I put the Bible down. The Holy Spirit says, I need you to put the Bible down. Just pray. Raise your hands. Pray. And watch what I do. Because let me explain something to you. At the end of the day, the one who's speaking is not John. The one who's speaking is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to do whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do. And if you came hungry tonight, it wasn't I came hungry tonight because I wanted to hear this guy. I came hungry tonight because I need something from God. I need to get, I need to get hungry. I need to get deeper. I need, to, to, I need some specific things in my life. I need my character. I need the favor of God. I need more presence. I need to, come on, the more fire. Come on, God. Amen? 
And you get into that place, and all of a sudden, he says, put, the, put it down, John. And I put it down, and there was 80 teenagers and 20 adults. And you could feel the presence of God. I can feel the presence of God in this room right now. Can you? I feel like I'm in the days of Michigan. That's what I was taken back when I was in worship. I felt like I was in Michigan again. Man, I miss those days. You know why I miss those days? Because there was no agenda. There was no agenda. There was no clock. We did mornings, af morning, afternoon, night, nine weeks long, every day. We were off maybe one day. And there were times when the place was full, and there were times when there was place was three people, and you preached, and, you, and whatever God wanted to do is if the place was maxed out. And the presence of God was the same if the place was full or if the place was three people. And you were crazy hungry for God. Because I don't, it's not about anything anymore. There was, this is only 22 years ago, folks. We didn't have iPhones where everyone is on their social media and looking at their Facebook during the meetings or shopping on Amazon. Come on, God. And you're radical and you're, and you're desperate and you're like, Lord, something, God. And you look back and I, Lord, what, and, he's, and I heard him. What did you miss? What do you miss about it, John? I miss the simplicity of a Jesus. I miss the simplicity of just going in a meeting and just crying out for you and I don't give a rip what time it's over. I tell you something, if you really want to move of God, you better take your watch and throw it away and you better take your clock that's on the wall and throw it away. Because if you think he's going to blast the place open on conditions, you'll wait another 20 years. Because if you put any conditions on the Holy Spirit, he will take, come on God, he will snatch the anointing away faster than he gave it. Amen? Because you'll test to see what you really made of and what you really want. He said to me, John, how hungry are you? I said, I'm so hungry for you. He goes, but you got to lay it all down. you got to give me everything that you are in control of. And I believe this place is so set up for something absolutely out of the box because you've persevered and you've stayed hungry in the midst of a storm. Because in the midst of a storm, if you notice what takes place after a midst of a storm, not just the peace that surpasses all understanding, but the breakthrough and then the next assignment. Come on, God. If you see the individuals that were with Jesus what took place after the boat? What took place after Peter was on the boat? What took place after he was on the water? Where did they land? Come on, God. Things are happening again. It goes from one event to another, but a different level of authority and a different level of, of, of test. Amen? So watch. The Lord says, uh, just lay, just stretch forth your hands and pray. And what happens if I came to you tonight after David announced me and I said to you, I have nothing for you except just raise, I'm going to raise my hands and pray. Many people would maybe leave because they're coming expecting I need, or maybe I'm going to get a word tonight. And then it shows you who you really came for. So I laid stretched forth my hands and I prayed and all of a sudden the joy came in laughter came in 80 adults and 20 80 teenagers and 20 adults start getting filled with the Holy Ghost I wasn't laying hands on them this was a pastor who said to me he looked at me during the midst of a absolute supernatural spiritual bedlam he looks at me and he goes what's happening in the room and I said to him it's just the G it's just Jesus he's messing up your world 
and they're either falling on the floor, they're crying, they're praying, they're prophesying over and over. Let me explain something to you. They didn't take a class on prophecy. They didn't. Nobody was laying hands on them to get the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost came in and dominated all of them because I'm choosing to dominate them today and overwhelm them with my presence. And they all got radically wrecked where I'm just watching, and then the Holy Spirit told me to walk around the building because it was a circled auditorium, and I'm walking around the building, and all of a sudden you're just seeing people literally shaking by the power of God. And then this gentleman runs in, and he says to me, I need you to see what happened in the building next door. And I said, what happened? And he goes, this is the place where Tozer preached. You know Tozer? I said, yeah. He goes, well, the door just flew open. The door just flew open. The door's been locked. It's a, it's a, it's a place where we just, it's a supply center now. But it used to hold meetings in here. The door flew open. It's stuck. We can't close it. And I walked in there. While everyone is out and there's, there's people are all getting filled with the presence of God, I walked in there and you can see the writings on the wall when they etched in the, in the, with, with their chisels or whatever. They would carve the, the scriptures on the wall and in the pews because of the presence of God. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, God, the simplicity of the kingdom of heaven, the, the simplicity of meetings, God, where we come in and sometimes, Lord, we put, we, we put a demand on it, but are we really putting a demand on it? I want to put a demand on it where it changes and revolutionizes the way I think, the who I am, what I am, where I'm going, and everything gets changed. And all of a sudden, the cloak that you're wearing is everything, your identity is completely changed. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 11, 1, is faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Meaning that I, I, don't, I only need just a little piece. Hey, let me tell you something. 37 years of marriage and six kids from 33 down to 13 and a half has been one heck of a journey. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know how my wife has put up with my stuff. Because in ministry, we could paint a picture of everything's awesome. Because when we come into the house of God, it looks like everything's awesome. Amen? But there's struggles too. Come on, God. There's struggles. And then when your children get older, I remember when our kids were little, little kids, that's when we were on the road in Saginaw and Michigan and everywhere else. Different nations we would take them to. It was amazing. Missions trips in the Dominican Republic with kids that are little, feet taking care of the poor. My one son who's 19 right now, giving pictures of him giving medicine to, to sick people. I'm like, Lord, those are the best days of our life. I miss those days so much. I'm not saying God is, isn't doing anything great. Now he is. But sometimes you gotta, sometimes the Lord wants to revisit your past to engage your present. Come on, God. It was never meant to be comfortable. It was never meant to be comfortable. Because there's going to be a time when we meet those disciples and we talk to these guys. And they're going to tell us, trust me, it wasn't comfortable. They're not going to tell us stories that were rough. They're going to tell us, to, they're going to tell us stories that even though the rough, they're going to be, they, they, it might seem that like it was a little hard. But they were experiencing the, the fullness of the grace of God. Because let me tell you something, we have never gone through what they've gone through. Sometimes I think about them often about what they went through and had no idea what they signed up for. Amen? So you know, you know when you're coming with a prophetic message and all of a sudden you, you feel like you're preaching in an air dome again in Saginaw, Michigan in 2002, but it's not, it's not anything that I did. It's the what the the Spirit of God is doing with the people. Because I'll tell you, 
when you can, if you can see what I can see, and I can, in the eyes that I see, I see hu- eyes of hunger. I see people in this room that I haven't seen in years that were in our revival center years ago. You know, in making decisions to go after God and Lord, I don't understand why does it have to be so difficult, God? Why, why does it have to be so uncomfortable? Because I want to see what you're made of, John. I want to say this one thing before I start speaking in words over people. In the summer of 2001, when my wife and I, when I was on staff in a church in Jersey, the Lord told us to go to Wall Township, New Jersey, through the pastor. The pastor, I want, here's another thing. Come on, God. The, you, the, there's times with the, where, where you're transitioning into one thing, and the Lord will do something else, and you have no idea what he's actually doing, and he'll actually use people to set you up for something significant in the spirit realm, and they have no idea what they're doing. So I'm on staff in a church, and the pastor all of a sudden suddenly says, you and your wife should go visit this crusade that's taking place in Wall Township, New Jersey, at an at a, um, Assemblies of God church in Wall Township. And it was the summer of 2001, July. Now, we've been spirit-filled for a long time and we do we we know god would you know when we, we we're hungry for god and we, but all of a sudden he says go down there i just think you're supposed to go visit and we go down there and we go down there and we go down there i don't know what night it was maybe it was a friday night whatever and we go down there and we get radically wrecked by the spirit of god so bad that the meeting outside with that where we are underneath this tent hay bales the spirit of god hits me so hard you're getting blown over you're you're flipping over in the hay bales you're out for how who knows how long and when you come to there's hay all over you and you feel a wreck and it's it's, it's people are running all over the place because the lord's just electrifying everybody i'm like what lord what are you doing i'm not used to, you know, what is this and you get literally Kidnapped by the Spirit of God because He's breaking you free from your, from your, your, the, your, you know, the very thing that you become comfortable with, your routine. And the Lord brought me onto this church for for several weeks. I was on staff for several weeks, and I'm like, and I knew it the moment that I was there, and I accepted a position to come on staff. And as a prophetic voice, all the places that the Lord has sent me to, I knew that there was always a reason, a specific assignment of why. But this time it was a little bit more different. And we come back and, the, and we tell the pastor about what the Lord just did. And he wants nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with your hunger. Because he can't control it. He can't harness it. And you know what the Holy Spirit told us? You need to go the whole summer, every meeting... Every time they have a meeting, get in your car from Rockland County, New York, and drive to Wall Township, New Jersey, every night. And I was working in a company, and we'd come home sometimes 2, 3, 4 in the morning and to get up at 6 to go to work for nine weeks. And we had f- several kids, several children, four kids. And we're like... But God will provide. And the Lord provided. But he said the whole purpose of the whole meet, the whole purpose of the summer was as how hungry are you, Nancy? How hungry? I don't want you to just go to one meeting. I want you to go to nine weeks of meetings. Nine weeks to see what you're made of. Don't worry about your, your kids, they'll be okay. But just trust me. And then that was the beginning stages of when we left in 2002. And the thing that I wanted to share with you all tonight was this. What I so felt in my spirit was, as I believe you're getting ready to shift, and many of you, are, I feel, are, are going to shift individually as well as corporately, but the Lord's going to break you free from some specific things in your life and transition you in specific things and get a hold of you because many of us haven't 
maybe experienced that time when you're asked to take a walk up a road. You know, Abraham, you're, you're going to be the father of many nations, stars in the sky, sand in the seashore. And then all of a sudden, I'm going to ask you to lay down a son. That makes no sense whatsoever. It doesn't make any natural sense at all. But you don't need, because I'm going to explain something to you. There's so many times when we hear the word of God or the word that comes to us through whatever, an individual directly from God, what we do is we interpret it based out of our wounds. We interpret it based out how we are emotionally in this season to meet our need or to meet how I feel it's supposed to respond or how it's supposed to activate me based on how I'm doing spiritually and emotionally. And that's why so many people don't get to where they're going because it becomes conditional. The very things that God wants you to do, and we put, even put, put, we put conditions on God, and we put conditions on this. It can't be this way. It has to always be this way because I don't want anything to be uncomfortable. So I need it to be always comfortable, and I'm good. Amen? There's many, many times, many, many times where the Holy Spirit is doing things in your life and you have no idea what He's doing and you're believing for breakthroughs and you have no clue that you're actually in the midst of a breakthrough and God's doing something significant you're not even aware of it. So don't underestimate the small beginnings in your life when the Holy Spirit is aligning you with something that it doesn't seem God, doesn't look like God, but I just got to trust God. Amen? Over the course of the last four years, what the enemy has tried to instill in this nation is fear. And he did a pretty good job. And I do believe the nation now has, has turned completely in the right direction. And I said this over the course of the last four years, the very thing that the enemy tried to do in this nation wasn't to discredit people, it was to discredit God. And everything that you've seen in this nation was to discredit Jesus. It's a mocking spirit. The enemy loves to mock God. The enemy loves to mock God. He'll use churches, governments, leaders, whoever. You see it even what's taking place in this nation over the course of the last several weeks with the amount of ministries that are falling. You need to understand something. The, 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 the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wisdom. Meaning that even behind the pulpit, it's not about how Jesus, oh, come on, God. It, Jesus is not impressed at how well you can preach. He's not impressed how well you can shout. Come on, God. He's impressed of the hunger and the integrity and the character. Because your character and your integrity outweigh your anointing. Amen? And when you get, and the Lord spoke to me, especially in the office that I carry, that you have to understand the, that the relevance of what you're doing is affecting people's lives. And the accountability of what you're doing. It's not about how big your following is. It doesn't matter how many people like your ministry. It doesn't matter how many likes you have. It doesn't, ma doesn't matter. What matters is we could have, I could have grew this ministry in the natural 10 times greater, but it didn't matter. People say to me, how come you don't have a website like everybody else has videos? Because I don't care. It was only about Jesus anyway. At the end of the day, it's not about me. It's always been about him. At the end of the day, people, when you're, when, when you're speaking and you're prophesying and you're releasing prophetic words, I don't believe that the prophetic office and the prophetic calling is the training ground in front of people so you can make a mistake and say, I was just learning because individuals become codependent on you, take that to the bank and rely on it and activate on the very thing that if it wasn't God, messes up their life. Amen? You're supposed to be hearing God.
Jesus says, my, my sheep know my voice. I don't believe there's any room to miss. I don't believe it. If you're hearing Jesus, you're hearing Jesus. If you're missing it, it's because you've come out of the anointing and now you're, all, you're operating in the natural. Amen? And that's one of the things I wanted to just bring the foundation with today, of tonight was this, is that when you get into the sensitivity of the Spirit of God and you're hearing His voice and trusting in what you're hearing. Because so many of us, I believe, there's many, many times when we fall short because we're not confident of actually what we're hearing. And we second guess it. And many of us have fallen short and because of the risk and the faith step that the Holy Spirit wanted us to take. You know, Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I'll show you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. It means that you don't have access in the natural, but you have access in the spirit realm. It wasn't supposed to be rocket science. It was supposed to be pretty easy. But we've made it that way. But the closer you get to him and the sensitivity, more sensitive you get to him, you can hear and and what he really longs for. Amen? What does he long for? What is he crying out for? I wanted to say this thing before I start speaking over some people. We've written three books. One book about my life, Journey of Destiny. Second book was a prophetic manual called Listen, Learn, Obey from our school, Voices and Wilderness School, The Prophets. And the third book called Mysteries of Heaven. Of 11 and a half years, almost 12 years of prophetic words that we released. But I had no idea that the third book was even existent until the Holy Spirit said, John, you got to remember the word that you were given years ago that you had three books. And I only written two. I said, where's the third book, God? And he goes, you've been writing it for 11 and a half years, 12 years. So one thing I wanted to say over all of you is there's, I believe that there's things that are going on in your life right now that you have no idea that you're setting yourself up for significant breakthrough and you have no idea simply because you can't see it until the Holy Spirit reveals it. But don't be afraid. Amen? Don't be afraid to take the step. Don't be afraid to, to do something that's completely out of the box that doesn't make any sense. Hey, listen, all of these prophetic words that we released over the course of, and there's thousands of them, over the course of the last 12 years, 11 and a half, 12 years, there were times when, where, where people questioned them, governments questioned them, and, tried, and, 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 the, the, and people coming against you, and this, and that, and this, and, and you, sometimes you want to shut down completely. But you got to know who you are, and you got to know your assignment. And you got to be confident in who you are and what God's called you to be. And you hold on to that. And you don't let man cause you to sway to the left or to the right. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you stand to your feet? One of the things that impressed me the most in Genesis 22, and I'm going to speak over some people, and I want to speak word over the house. One of the things that impressed me so much about Genesis 22 and, and Abraham and Isaac was when, when Abraham, when he got to the base of the hill and he was getting ready to walk up alone, he says to the individuals that came with him, and he goes, me and the boy are going to worship, but we're going to come back again. He had no idea where an offering was coming from, but he prophesied to his situation and he spoke something in a situation that he had no clue how to obtain. Because in the natural, it was physically impossible because he wasn't going to leave his son and go look for something. But he spoke to his situation and said, me and the boy will worship, but we'll come back again. In September of 2002, when the, when the crusade was over, we thought we were supposed to stay in Saginaw, Michigan and start a revival center. And the ministry contacted us and we had a meeting and said, it's time for everybody to go home. Well, we just left New York for nine weeks and I've got nothing. Nothing. 
no money, no job, and four kids. And now we have to go back home and start the ministry from scratch where nobody knows me. Nobody knows my name. There's no social media, folks. There's nothing except my wife, myself, four kids, and a minivan. Come on, God. And let me tell you, we can go down that road too, but let me tell you something. We have seen the supernatural provision of God come five times in our home where we didn't have to pay for a car five times over. Come on, God. Five times. And the Lord's wanted me to tell you this. There's times when the Holy Spirit wants you to tell somebody about what he's saying in the moment and release something, and you can't be afraid. Not to somebody that you know that you, what they're going to bring and accept and encourage you and, and everything. Sometimes the Holy Spirit is going to ask you to do something with somebody that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And this is what the Holy Spirit wanted me to tell you real quick. Real quick, because then I've got specific people I want to pray for. When we were at our fifth vehicle, when our fifth vehicle, fourth vehicle was down and out, and the road, the, 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 the miles, and the traveling, and the vehicles, one after the other, and the fourth vehicle was over, and, the, and, and next thing you know, I'm looking for a car, and I'm, you know, the Lord gives, the, somebody grants us a seed to get a vehicle, and I can't find the vehicle. I'm looking, because it was, it was something that I wanted. And I'm looking, and looking, and looking, and I can't find it. And now I'm getting frustrated with God. I said, Lord, you bless us with the seed. Where's the vehicle, God? And I have this dream. And I see this little boy come up to me in this dream. And he says to me, you're looking for the wrong vehicle. You're supposed to be looking for this one. And he says, it's a Toyota Sequoia, he said. You're supposed to be looking for a Toyota Sequoia. I was looking for a Ford Excursion. Next thing you know, I tell my wife, I go to hockey practice with my kids, and while I'm standing outside the, the rink, Holy Spirit says to me, you see that Asian man standing over there? Tell him your dream. <laughs> Come on, God. And I'm like, no, no, God. This is another, this is a God, this is a, this is a father of one of the players on my son's team, and I'm not gonna, no. Tell him your dream. Come on, God. So guess what? I started telling this guy, this is my dream. I got to tell you something. I had a dream. I saw this little boy, and he told me I'm looking for the wrong car. Now, that can get really crazy and goofy in the, in the prophetic camp. But you got to be obedient, and you got to take a risk. Brother? You got to take a risk. Even though it might seem absolutely ridiculous. Because somebody's got your blessing. And I tell him my dream and he looks at me and he starts smiling and he goes, you know something? What? He goes, I'm selling my Toyota Sequoia. <laughs> Come on, God. So next thing you know, I... I, I he tells me what he wants for it. And he goes, no, but I'm trading it in. I'm trading it in. I'm like, okay. I get home. I got all discouraged. I said, I just had this encounter, God. You just told me to tell this man my dream. What's the deal? I went to bed. Next thing you know, I woke up, and the following morning, there was an email from some strange guy. And he said, if this is John Metalli with an M, I'm going to sell you my car for what you want it for. How did he get my email address? Well, he goes, you know what? And I called him up and he goes, not only am I going to sell it to you, I'm going to bring it to deliver it right to your house. And next thing you know, he delivers it to my house. And there it is. And he gives me the keys and somebody picks him up. But here's the thing I want to tell you. In the midst of your storms, there's times where God has significant breakthrough, but you've got it. Let me, fear is not always you're afraid of something. Fear is... I'm concerned with something. It's not always fear-based where you're afraid of something. It's your concern with, 
if I make this decision and it doesn't work, then I look back at my past. And many of us look back at our past to dictate our present. And this is the last thing I want to tell you. Pain from the past hinders your present. Victory in your past influences your future. Thomas, I believe, dealt with the past of abandonment. That's why when Jesus died and he was no longer and he rose, in that whole scenario where, where is he? I won't believe unless I see him. That's rejection. He left me. And something always sparks a chord. Bring something up to the surface in your life when you're dealing with something, a trauma. You understand what I'm saying? Nathaniel and the fig tree of rejection. Sitting under a tree, crying out to God, and not getting answered. Jesus didn't meet Nathaniel under the fig tree. Thomas didn't get the encounter with Jesus until seven days later. Amen? Seven days later, Jesus comes through the wall. Jesus meets Nathaniel and says, I saw you under the fig tree. You didn't know I was there, but I was there. But I didn't meet you there. Because there's times when I allow you to go through something in order for you to become undone. Many of us are afraid to become undone because it shows weakness. But sometimes weakness shows strength. Don't be afraid to become vulnerable in front of your friends. Don't be afraid to become vulnerable and say, I'm not sure. Don't be afraid to become vulnerable that I'm not certain on how this is going to work out. The only way it doesn't work out is if you give in and throw in the towel. As long as you stay in that position where that burner is still lit, he will show up and bring you to a place of revelation and understanding. But he will cause you to activate something in your life in order for you to get there. Amen? And lastly, this, real quick. As I said before, the enemy loves to mock and discredit the body of Christ. That's where we, be, we stay sensitive to the voice of God and the spirit of God so that there's no room for the enemy to engage in that capacity. Amen? But the Lord will give us things in order for us to steward to take, so we can overcome with authority the very thing we struggled with. Amen? You understand what I'm saying? He'll keep, your things will keep coming around in your life, circling back because you haven't taken authority over it. And if you don't take authority over your situation, your situation takes authority over you. So Jesus never sets up his disciples to fail, correct? Never. But one who stewarded the finances, what was his name? Stewarded the finances. And what? Fell because of the finances, didn't he? Jesus set him up and caused him to be what? The treasurer of finances. And he fell because of finances. Exposes a weak link in this man's DNA, in his character. The very thing that he didn't take authority of is the very thing that the enemy came and used. The enemy will always come into and infiltrate into an area of your life where there's open opportunity for him so what happens and the very last thing I want to say is this and the Lord gave me this revelation about a year and a half ago almost two years ago if I can't get to Jesus I'm going to get to one of your disciples because I can get I'm a pretty familiar or I have a bit of an understanding of what this man wants to do that he's going to die and hang on a cross so guess what I'm going to go after one and what does the one do? The disciple hangs himself on a tree. They were, they were never meant to hang. There was only one that was meant to hang on a tree. His name is Jesus. But the enemy loves to mock and discredit and dishonor. And if I can get to someone and get to them, I can, mm, come on, God. 
So don't give him any room. Stay sensitive. Break off the fear. And trust God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to do whatever you want to do. And we just pray for every individual in this room, Lord, that needs a touch from heaven, a breakthrough, a transition, a shift, a character adjustment, whatever, God. We speak the blessing of the Lord and the favor. Amen. Can I pray over some people? Thank you, God. Trisha, I got a word. I'm going to give you the first word. And it's not because you're the, the woman of the house. It's because that's what Holy Spirit told me to do. But what I saw over you was I saw you in, they were almost burgundy colored clothing. And it was a robe. And I saw you with your arms stretched out and I saw many, many people preparing you for a new robe. And the Holy Spirit said, come on God, that I'm pre presenting you a new robe, a new robe of authority, a new robe of righteousness, a robe of cleansing, a robe of purity, a robe of guidance, a robe of instruction, a robe of tenure, because the very, come on God, for the very capacity that you operate in doesn't even compare to the level of authority that you're about to step into. And the very thing is, as even with Esther, when es Esther was perfumed for the amount of months that she was perfumed and prepared, there also has been a plan as well. Just like Haman had a plan but this was spiritual to stop the forward movement of the kingdom of heaven with the people. The Lord said you're in a situation right now where there'll be a significant advancement and there'll be a new strategy that's been released to you in this season right now of, of rest and pouring in. But a deposit is going to be restored and a deposit is going to be also re-released and a deposit is going to be released for the first time. Three levels where you're going to see some very significant heavenly visitation that's going to give you the, the DNA and the structure and the infrastructure of where you're heading and where you're going for everything is about to change because as the robe changes everything changes and the Lord just wanted me to tell you this that he's been so proud so proud of the character the mindset the integrity that you carry And just as Esther walked in, the king said, ask of what you wish. I know, come on God. This path I see you walking on this path and all these flowers to the left and to the right and this golden sunshine that's just beaming and it's just literally just overwhelming you at the same time it's guiding you. As the the robes were changed. All of a sudden, I saw white robes. And these white robes were put on you. And the white robes represent unblemished garments. And the Lord said, this robe that's being placed on you, this unblemished garment, is a new, new place where the slate is completely clean. But a heavenly download given with this plan 
of what the season comes over the next six to ten months. And it'll be a voice that no one's ever heard before. It'll be a, it, the, even the way you speak won't even, it won't sound familiar. It'll be so cutting because he's, he's seen an individual that can be fully trusted. And then the fire that you have been through and what you've gone through and how you've come out, unblemished, God says. And even when there are times when you feel like there were blemishes, God says there are no blemishes. What I see is no blemishes. But a significant new realm of glory and new assignment that no one can ever say they've seen on you where the history has... It's like the altar, when the wind came, it blew everything off of the altar and there's no history. It's completely clean. Holy Spirit says your new season is upon you. You'll see completely clean. It's a completely fresh wave of my glory in Jesus' name. Come on, God. That gentleman right over there. I don't know your name, but I've seen you here before. I don't know your capacity. I don't really know anybody's names here, except a few. But I can tell you that adjustments are being made in the spirit realm regarding your family. Adjustments. And you've been persevering and, and, and contending and believing. And, even, and the Lord wanted me to tell you, you carry the radiance of joy. And you carry a smile that's contagious in a heart. But the Lord wanted me to tell you that I've seen, mm, come on God, your heart regarding your own and the very things that you contend for. And I'm about to bring into alignment a particular one that you have considerably thought about a lot and have prayed about and have brought to the table and have been, mm, come on God. But the Lord wanted me to tell you there's a promise over your entire family and entire lineage. But the Lord also wanted me to tell you that there's actually breakthrough and healing coming into your home, in physical healing. But the Lord wanted me to tell you that even shifting is coming and changes in your, in the, in the very vocation that you carry. I'm not sure what you do or what, you're, what capacity you're in, but there's some shifting that's taking place that must take place and is critical for the next five to 10 years of your life. Come on, God. And even though you've been reflecting on your past, I even see when you were a little boy. Come on, God. And when you reflect how time has gone by so fast, but you have not seen the greater of great. And even when you've even you've thought about your own identity and your own value behind the scenes, when you've looked up at the ceiling and counted the cost, sometimes they've even said, is it even worth it, God, sometimes? You have such value for the kingdom. And you impact more than you know but he's gonna bust you out of some things that became comfortable because he sees you trustworthy and you carry something that's different. Woman of God, I keep hearing the word restoration. You? Yeah. It's in your bloodline. Restoration. I see it going one generation back, two generations back. Okay. And as much as you intercede, there are those that are interceding for you. But you have come into a crossroads of what's next, God. And Holy Spirit says, don't be afraid to cross over and to make the decision. Come on, God.
even in the midst of when you were a little girl, there was something different. You were different, very different. But God says, over these next five to 10 years, the increase of sensitivity to the vision of God and the increase of the visitation of God that's going to be displayed upon your life to affect the life of your family. For you have travailed much for the house. But God says now I'm focusing on your family and the restoration of ones that have fallen away. They shall come when you least expect it. Even in particular two, possibly three, shall come before the year's end and even ask for forgiveness and bring back, come on God, the lineage. Hallelujah, Spirit of God. Thank you, God. From the top of your head down to the soles of your feet, and even though the enemy has tried to come and created a little bit of havoc, there was a little bit of havoc, and there were some questions, God says that he'll be repaid many times over, and you will see significant breakthroughs come forth from it and understand the mysteries of why and how and when of what actually took place. But it actually is all centering around your life and your, the whole calling of your life, the whole movie of your life, the whole story that's taking place is centered around you, God says, and what's inside of you. But there's even some from your past that you're gonna release. And as much as you have forgiven, woman of God, there's more to forgive. The hidden, the hidden mysteries. Come on, God. Tim, the Lord gave me your name about three nights ago. I've never dialogued with you personally, but I did write your name down three days ago. And the Lord spoke to me and said, what is your desire? What is your desire? Ask him what his desire is, for it's more than he can imagine. But I'm going to shift his identity. I'm going to shift his identity and cause him to revisit the past. And you're going to revisit the past of the very specific things. And we're going to, the Lord says, I'm going to close the doors in specific things. Because some specific things from the past have lingered in the present. But I'm going to shift something and you're going to have to release I'm going to shift and you're going to have to release. But I also see you, Tim, the Lord spoke to me and said, just as Simon was asked to throw the net on the other side, he says, Tim, I want tell Tim to throw the net on the other side. Because there's something that's even greater than he's ever experienced before, but it's on the other side. And it's going to take a step of faith. And it's going to test you to the greatest test you've ever experienced in your life. Because you're not, it's unfamiliar territory. And even though familiar territory is good, at times it's good. But the Lord said, there's a, mm, come on God, there was actually inner th things that took place in the past from things that were identified that God says, I'm going to take those anchors out of the sand and remove them. And now you're going to sail on the seas in areas that you've never sailed before. And your identity is going to completely change and they're not going to recognize the way you speak and they're not going to recognize the very thing that comes out of your heart because it's sub all things are subject to change. And the Spirit of God is going to visit you in a way where you're going to have that encounter with God where it's going to literally shift everything internally because of where you're headed and where you're going and you're actually called to go higher in the very capacity and ministry that God has called you to be. This, oh, come on, God, this season that you're in, and I don't know the, the, where, you're, where you're at right now, and I don't know the, your longevity of what you're doing, but I can tell you there's an anchor coming out of the sand, and the Lord is going to call you to take a risk to do something that you know that you're called to do, what you're called to be, the way you operate, the very capacity that you're called to operate, the, very, the office that you're called to operate in, and he's going to give you the opportunity opportunity to set sail but it's going to take a risk and it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable but don't be afraid because I'm in it because you carry something and it's inside of you that right now God wants to bring out because it's a lion 
but it's far greater than the capacity that you're in. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You know that torch, David? That the Olympic torch when they go? Am I okay for time? I got like five more minutes. I'm good? You know that torch at the Olympics when they run and they light it? I saw you running and lighting it. Okay? It's, it's, it's not just a little, you carry the little torch. But the, when the runners come in, they light the torch and it's a giant flame. Okay? The Lord wants me to tell you something. You're a giant flame. Okay? You're a giant flame. Don't ever, ever, ever think less than that. The Holy Spirit wanted me to tell you, your flame will, see, will be seen in the nations. You'll be invited to the nations because he can trust you. You carry a fire in you. And the Lord wanted me to tell you, you've done a well, you've done a good job, son. Don't question yourself. Don't ever question your ability. He's very, very blessed. As a little kid, you might be in your 40s, but to him, you're a little kid. And he sees a little boy carrying a flame. Your wife is proud of you. Your children are proud of you. But there will be times, my son, that I will call you to, to leave and you will have to go and bring my word into places that they're not called to go, but you'll have to go. But don't be afraid, I'm with you. And you will see a great move of God because you're a carrier of the glory. Just like the woman with the, at the well, she left her jars. God said, you might have to leave your jars, today. And your jars represent your family, but I'll take care of them. Remember, they're my kids. That daughter's my daughter. As much as you love them, and as much as you honor them and cherish them, they're mine. But you'll have to go, just like that woman did, and spark something so crazy and radical. Don't be afraid. He's with you all the days of your life. And it's something that you've desired. Your heart has said, I want fire, God. I saw it the first moment you ever spoke. I said, he's a carrier. He's a carrier. And he doesn't know what he has yet. It's more than you can possibly imagine. And he'll take you to places you never imagined. Don't be afraid. The faith step the transition in the family. Faith steps. See, the melodies that you're playing right now are the melodies over your own life. Over your own life. They represent sweetness and harmony. And the Lord said, I'm actually bringing more harmony into your own home. If you've been crying out and asking for more peace and more joy and more harmony, and Lord just, I need more. I need more. I need more. And I don't know, but I see growth and I see extension. I see growth and I see extension and I see expansion coming over to you. But the Lord wants me to tell you, the very harmony that you're playing right now is called a victory song. So over the course of the next several weeks, as you get into the July month, you'll experience the victory that you've been believing for. And it shall come when you least expect it, and it shall come and overwhelm you. Father, in Jesus' name, we just speak the blessing over the Lord of the harmony right now, God, and the new melody of God, in Jesus' name. One of the things that I've cherished the most in ministry, especially wherever I minister, is just being sensitive to God. And just waiting on God and pausing on God and just letting Jesus be Jesus in the room. Because we've all gone through so much. We've all encountered so much. But I can tell you there's no greater place than when the anointing is in the house.
and the anointing is on your life. The snow, most amazing place, most amazing feeling. You feel like you can conquer the world. But that is so available, whether we're in here or when we leave here. There's a guy right outside these doors that needs Jesus so bad. I saw it in his face. I asked him one before we did the meeting started. I said, you're going to be here all night? He goes, yeah, I'm going to be here all night. Why don't you stand to your feet? the lady that usually sits up here, right here, with the deep voice. The Lord spoke to me, and I wrote it in my notes. Brown hair, deep voice lady. I don't know your name. Lisa? Thank you, God. I want you to stretch your hands towards Lisa. Come on, God. Lisa, you're more valuable than you possibly know. But you've gone through many, many things that not many people know about. And you have not shared what you've gone through. And there's times when you come in here, actually many times when you come here, and I've seen you. And you're hungry for God and you, you want God and you have a gift. There's also times when you feel like, I really don't have anything to give. But he wanted me to tell you that he's, you're in the setup stages for an, an incredible surge of glory that's going to take you over the top with your joy. Because the enemy has stolen your joy. You've gone so far. There's been so much in the past that st keeps staying in the present. And you've tried so hard to overcome. But the Holy Spirit wanted me to tell you, you have overcome. And when you didn't even think that you could even continue, and you didn't want to continue, and to others it looked like you were good. But God knew. He wanted me to tell you that his daughter, just the way you are, you make him so proud and that he's so in love with you. Don't ever, ever underestimate who you are. And even though at the times when the enemy tried to tell you you had no value, come on, God. And the reason why I say come on, God, is because I, he's talking to me. So I respond. When you actually considered it's not worth it anymore, I'm done. I've just begun. But this year, this year, 2024, is the golden year of the restoration of joy. And you'll understand the mysteries of your name and your last name, of what you went through and how, what you went persevered and how you overcame and the whole purpose of who you even, why, what you are, and even the vocation that you carry is all a mystery. So we just speak the blessing of the Lord and the restoration of the very things that were stolen. So the Lord wanted me to tell you as this message came earlier about Abraham and Isaac, your ram is in the thicket. And I don't know what that means, but I think you do. There's a ram caught in the thicket. You just haven't gotten to the top of the hill yet. And even though you've prophesied, I can see the altar. It's so close. So when you keep going day by day, understand the mystery that it's, you're in a moment's time when he says, don't touch the board. Meaning, don't touch yourself. 
Don't stop. Don't give up. I know you love me. He's allowed you to walk this journey for a while. And at times it felt like it was too much. And you've contended. I've seen in the way you've prayed. I've heard your cries and I've heard your travail. Because when you speak, it's your heart. And your heart is crying out, God, don't forget me. So the altar is close. The ram will be released soon. And you will begin a new chapter of beauty and grace. In Jesus' name. And lastly, lastly, I'm gonna, I just want to pray this uh, over all of us that I feel as if there's anyone in this house As I was focusing on Nathaniel and, and Thomas for a little bit, on rejection and abandonment, if that's you, and you've dealt with abandonment and rejection, I want you to come up to the platform from a parent. Anyone that's dealt with abandonment from a parent or rejection, and we're gonna pray And not only am I calling you, but I'm one of them. My mother died in front of me when I was 19 in my home, and my father abandoned me when I was 26. And that was a hard pill to swallow. And I had to learn to forgive over and over and over again until the Holy Spirit spoke to me of several months ago and told me, that John, your father, did not know how to love conditionally because he was not loved conditionally, unconditionally. And my father abandoned me when I was 26. That's a long time ago. Another lifetime ago. And I was still struggling with it as a man of God and suicidal before I was 19 because of a mother who died right in front of me after I saw her miraculously healed of alcoholism in one night and sickness and disease and then all of a sudden my mother who was an incredible woman of God who gets radically saved and healed from alcoholism gets cancer and dies in seven months and I see a woman perfectly healthy go to 90 pounds at 53 years old and my father who I lived with it was just me and him we had hardly any relationship and I got no help from him whatsoever so I immediately got angry at God and it took years because there's no methodology that just fixes it and you're done because the enemy reminds you of your past and you can get prayed over a million times and forgive a million times but the enemy will use a different source of pain that reminds you of your past to open actually a healed wound come on God but the Lord reminded me, you have to lay them down just like Abraham laid down his son. Completely and understand the Father's heart. So for those of you that are, in, that are in the front right now that have dealt with abandonment and rejection from a father, it doesn't matter if you've healed, it doesn't matter if you've forgiven and released. I want you to close your eyes, raise your hands, And ask the Father to give you a, a visual right now. Ask Jesus to give you a visual. You got through. Lord, and I believe what Holy Spirit wants to release on all of us right now is the spirit of compassion. Because it's it doesn't matter if you get rejected or you dealt with rejection from a parent. There will be people that reject you later. I've had more rejection from the body of Christ than anyone on the planet, from leaders. 
and you will continually deal with it until you fully in, engage and understand who you are in Christ and your destiny and your calling and how much he loves you, that it doesn't matter what anybody says. I have to finish my race, and I'm not going to give up. So I'm going to speak the blessing over the Lord over, over you, all of you. So, Father, in Jesus' name, from the top of their head down to the soles of their feet, Okay, Jesus. I'm going to just lay hands on you and the Holy Spirit will just, we're going to just finish everything that was started. The fire of God. We speak the fire of God. 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 Speak life, Angela. Speak life. Speak life, Angela. No fear and no worry. 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 The fire of God. 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 The fire of God, the fire of God. And the restoration of your home. The restoration of your home. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Forgive. The fire of God. He comes. Riding on establishing you in a new place. As I see said on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He's always been with you all the days of your life. Jesus. 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 He loves you unconditionally. And it's never What is being poured in right now will last forever as you can feel the weight of his glory and we just speak that right now over every individual that's up here the weight of his glory 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 the weight of its glory. Shame. And the promised land. And the glory of God. Restoration of hope. And the still. Reconciliation and restoration. Reconciliation and restoration. Reconciliation and restoration. Reconciliation and restoration. Where you've you've lost the hope and you said, I don't know how it's gonna happen, God. I don't know how it's gonna happen. I don't know how much more I can handle, God. But is it the restoration of hope? The restoration of your mm, come on, God. as his hands upon your heart and he molds and he fastens and he changes Jesus a promise that has never been forgotten a promise that has never been forgotten wonderfully and fearfully made all the days of your life with a new beginning it's never
for a specific promise that you've desired for such a long time. A dream. You shall see this too come to pass. For I am not a God that shall lie, Father, in Jesus' name. The words of the Holy Spirit. The significance of the kingdom of heaven. And the glory of God. We speak, Lord. The significance of God. The significance of God. Your worth, your value, your significance. God says, I'm re-honoring, restructuring, re-identifying. We speak the blessing of you, Lord. Blessing over you, Lord. Days of your life orchestrated by the kingdom of heaven. Never. and the healing that comes with forgiveness. Reflection of the days of old brings about the restoration of the days to come. God says reflect some. Reflect. For there's much coming. Much coming. For there's... Oh, God, I should be out of Even look at the days specific days in the boy the boy that I saw 8, 9, 10 years old God says 8, 9, 10 years old when I saw that one run and I saw that one laugh revisiting those days revisiting those days to give you a very special word come on God your value and your worth God's eyes is so precious. As he grabs your hands and pulls you out, he pulls you away. A book was called Come Away, My Beloved. And I hear these words spoken over your life. Come away, my beloved. For you are truly honored and cherished. And God says you'll be honored there is a new honor that's coming to you. For the DNA, oh, come on, God, the DNA that has been placed inside of you, the spiritual DNA that's been placed inside of you shakes nations. But first, it's going to visit the very inner place of your heart and then affect your very family. For you are a carrier. God says you too are. He has not forgotten about you. He has never forgotten about you. And even when you question, and I keep hearing these words, where has time gone, God? You've said these words, where has time gone? And even though you've even said it when you've looked up at the ceiling and you said, God, I'm tired. I'm tired. but he'll give you a supernatural grace and strength in this new season to experience the new thing of God that you've not experienced before and restore some of the things that you've given up on. Because there are things that you've given up on in the past that now still lie in the present. And he said, this is your day and your season right now to see these things come to pass. And there's plenty of time, God says. And there's also plenty of time of honor where there was dishonor and where you were broken and mm, he did not know he did not know and you carry more value than you know when others and there were words that were spoken 
and they penetrated the heart and they did damage and it took its toll and it affected years. But God said, I was in those years. And even though it, there were times when I was, you were, I'm not sure God anymore. It's, where are you? I'm with you, daughter. And now it's a season of shine. Because what you thought was impossible is possible. And what you thought was in, come on, God. It's a divine reversal. words over your life and they haven't come to pass but God said through that man this time next year something's coming <laughs> and it just came through laughter and you put it under the rug like she did but she set something up for that man of God and she had no idea she said to her husband, we need to build that house. We need to build that, that place and put a desk and a table and a candlestick. And I have no idea what I'm doing. And I have no idea what we're setting up. And she had no idea she was setting up for the most significant breakthrough in her life. And God said, your breakthroughs and significant breakthroughs didn't have to come when you were super young. Because you're still a little girl in my eyes, God says. Always will be a little girl in my eyes. But make more room for me, just like she did. And a dream of yours shall come to pass. Come on, God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, one more. Two more. You and Charlie. I keep hearing the word promises over your life. And I see you writing. And yeah, you're a seer. And you're also a doer. But God sees something different. And he sees something more. But he also sees the tenderness of your heart. And he also sees your travail. Come on, God. And as Moses went to Pharaoh three times, several times, and said, let my people go. The Lord has been contending for you in specific areas of your life. Come on, God. And there's that one thing. That one ingredient, God says, that you've so desired that one ingredient in your life that you so desire. Come to me all that are heavy laden and I'll give you rest. It's your season of change, woman of God something even though that there's been something on the table that you know that you have to make a decision about that only you are aware of this very specific things that you deal with on your own and very different plans and different very different strategies that God has in this new season called 2024 for you everything's going to shift and change because you knew it had to but there's something different even in the realm of I've got to go I've got to go and I'm going to take you there and you're going to see me in a way that you've never seen me before because there's a burning inside of you and it's called I'm hungry God there's something more because I'll take you away and I'm going to show you something that you've not seen before and you'll bring it back because it's necessary for you as you carry the spirit of Deborah you must go to this place, this land, and isolate yourself from the kingdom with Jesus and understand a new mystery that has not been solved yet. 
and understand what you would bring back is food for the masses. God. Glory to God. What was stolen is returned. What was stolen was returned. And the Lord said this, and he says this again. No more. No more. No more distractions and no more delays. No more distractions and no more delays. No more distractions and no more delays. There's that one that sit at the gate. And they said, who's worthy to come to the table? And I saw you, Charlie, coming and being brought to the table of plenty, of abundance. And even in your own strength, you've done so well, God says, even in your own strength. But I'm going to rejuvenate some different areas of your life and bring in a strength that you've not recognized or have ever experienced before. But you'll enter into a season of abundance not just in the natural, but in the spirit realm, to understand specific mysteries of why the enemy targeted you. Come on, God. But you carry something that's even greater, for your voice shall be heard in even multiple regions and areas in this nation. Because it's a testimony of the kingdom of heaven. But he brings back visitation from the past to also reestablish you in your present so you can understand a mystery of breakthrough, of honor. So Father, we just speak over your life. Father, we just speak over his life. We say yes and amen to his destiny and yes and amen to the calling. In all the days of your life, you'll see the strength of God establish you and even even in the likes of Aaron, when the oil ran down his beard, God says there'll be a new oil that runs down your beard. A new oil that'll be established on you. And people won't recognize your character or they won't even recognize what comes off of you for the glory shall be completely new. Shift and change. Shift and change. Shift and change. And don't be afraid. Make the decision, son the one that you've been contemplating. It's your time. Make the decision so that, mm, come on, God, so that you can go now. Go. But the decision needs to be made. God says, say yes. Hallelujah. Well, amen, church. How many of you were blessed tonight? I'm just going to pray us out. And won't you just come in agreement with me in saying yes, giving God our yes. He, he was shooting from the hip. It was rapid fire. He said a lot of things, intimacy and stepping into a new place, into a new path and a new season and new wineskins and everything he said. So just lift up your hands. and Father, we just say yes. We say yes to what you want to do in us and through us and in this region, God. And we thank you for your spirit for the glory of God that is resting on this place, God, and the gift of prophecy, Lord. And we thank you, Father, for every word that was released today, God. And we say, seal it in the blood of Jesus right now. And I bless your church. I bless them to go and to prosper and to thrive in the things of God and to be encouraged tonight in Jesus' name. Amen.